Senate, the Rowan County Sheriff is exploring changes to the officer's body camera policies after the second deadly shooting involving a deputy in just three months. Good evening at 10. I'm Brian Blakely. And I'm Alicia Barnes. Well, Sheriff Travis Allen is considering adjustments to how body cameras are mounted on deputies so that they can capture more of what happens. It's one of the biggest takeaways from the killing of 28-year-old Jordan Mays. Queen City News reporter Daniel Pierce also spoke with Mays' family. And Daniel, they tell you they want proof here the deputy's narrative, narrative is the truth. Yeah, they've looked at the timeline of what the sheriff's office is saying. They are also hearing the timeline from his girlfriend, who is inside the room when all of this happened, and while North Carolina laws prevent body camera video from being released to the public immediately, his family wants to see it now. We do understand that if an officer needs to protect himself because a gun is being pointed at him, we understand that. Um, but if there was no gun in his hand, Jordan May's family wants to know if anything could have been done differently by the Rowan County Sheriff's Office to prevent Tuesday's deadly shooting. Deputies were at this trailer tucked away in Salisbury trying to serve a warrant on the 28-year-old and the second suspect, Jeremy Buck. We're very familiar with him. Uh, known him to uh, usually have weapons with him. Buck was found hiding in this shed. Deputies were told Mays and his girlfriend were in a bedroom in the back of the trailer. When they asked him to come out, he didn't, so they entered. You plainly see a pistol, a, a handgun, immediately to the left of Mr. Mays. The deputies, I mean, they're telling him that. Don't go for that gun. Give me your hands. I'll shoot you. Don't don't go for the gun. I mean, they're be they're pleading with him not to do what he eventually does. Sheriff Travis Allen says the body camera footage shows Mays complied with the officers at first, then struggled and and turns to toward the handgun on the dresser, and according to deputies, grabs the handgun. One deputy fired five shots and killed him. The SBI discovered another firearm in the in the bed mattresses. May's cousin Whitney says his girlfriend confirmed it all happened so fast, but she didn't see a gun in his hands. There was like a, a little bit of wrestling and think this is a couple seconds and that he tried to to run, tried to to get away, was pushing through the officers and that he did not grab the gun. Sheriff Allen says the body camera footage is crucial to show what happens. However, at moments in this case and in others, the officer's hands block a portion of the camera lens unintentionally. A lot of time our body cameras are centered in our uniforms, but anytime we present our firearms, we block that camera footage. We're blocking our view of what the offender's doing. They should be able to provide that um, because when it, we're talking about someone's life, Someone's life that mattered. I, mean, I don't care how bad a person is or how many warrants they have. They're still a human. They're still loved by people. They still have family. They yeah. still have worth. And, you know, deadly force is the least thing that we ever, we ever want to do. Well, Sheriff Allen there, there says that he wants to explore moving the camera mount from where it's not in the chest, but potentially other parts of the body, like up on his shoulder to where it's able to see more. But that's going to be a larger conversation that he is having. Meanwhile, Mays says that her family will accept whatever the body camera shows if it aligns with the narrative that police have put out, but wants the sheriff's office to explore if any other tactics could be used in a situation like this. Alicia, Ryan. All right, Daniel Pierce, you have a little